It is not a secret that you catch more fish when you feed them at a certain spot. Consequently, Samuel and I have put a pole marker in the lake where we go every day with our inflatable boat in order to feed the carp. Samuel is in charge of the boat and the outboarder, whereas I am the one who feeds the fish and drops the line when we are over our hot spot. We are getting closer to our pole marker and I'm getting ready to drop the bait. We feed the fish with sweet corn, or in British English with maize, and uh, with fish pellets. I also use tiger nuts and hemp seed. We are over our spot now and I start feeding the place with the uh, maize. Here we are very close to the pole marker. I always feed a whole area. I do not just drop all the bait on one spot. Some anglers do that, but I mean that's that's your personal attitude to it. It is discussable if you uh, if you cast your bait all over the place or if you just uh, drop it on a small spot. So, jetzt auf der Stelle Samuel is turning the boat around now. I'm getting the rod ready and uh, I'm loosening the hook and drop the bait and the weight. So here you can see uh, the pole marker. I drop it not far away from the pole marker where most of our bait has been placed. And uh, Samuel is going back to uh, the bank and uh, I have opened the bail arm of my reel so that uh, the line gets in the water and uh, here we are arriving at the bank the line lies in a straight line now and the only thing I need to do is to get out of the boat and close the bail arm tighten the line a little bit and put it on the rod rest. My wife Svetlana is assisting us, that's always of advantage if somebody holds the boat. I hold the rod up because Samuel is uh, going to the other uh, spot where we continue feeding the fish and he goes with the boat underneath the line. He's managed to do that without getting entangled and here you can see him uh, alone in the boat while I and my wife uh, are walking to our bivvies and to swim eight. Yeah, he has started from swim nine. Well, having uh, fed the fish and having uh, taken the rods out, we must wait and wait and wait and wait until, surprise, surprise, at night one of the rod, one of the bite alarms goes off and a carp has been hooked. A little bit later the new day began and we could see what we caught in darkness. Uh, the sun manages to get through the fog. 
uh, a very lovely atmosphere. Uh, my son is uh, also present. He has come over from his swim. And here he is, still a bit sleepy. And what do we have in our landing net? Yes, here it is. A uh, shiny fish. A good grass carp. An excellent fighter in the very, very cold water, which is full of oxygen. So that took quite a while to get him out. Uh, we cannot fully see its beautiful colors. Uh, the fish shines yeah, like gold. It's got a golden bronze color, a bit like the sun that uh, shines through the fog. Uh, here it is again. Well, we got this uh, fish out of, of course we got it out of the landing net, we unhooked it and uh, we put a little bit of the clinic uh, disinfectant on the little wound in his mouth. We took some more pictures and then we released him. So here you can see if some of the pictures. Uh, it turned out that the fish was 26 pounds heavy. He's a little bit bleeding, but it's not a big wound. And uh, it immediately stopped when the clinic got on it. So, well, what a beautiful specimen. I've got bigger ones, but this one is a special one because he was such a good fighter. And uh, he immediately would swim away when I put him back. He was not tired at all. So, I'm fetching the clinic and uh, yeah, I'm putting a few drops in his mouth. I also check if there are some parasites on his uh, yeah, on his uh, scales, which was not the case. A perfectly healthy fish. Yeah, you can see the blue clinic. <coughs> and back he goes in his element in the ice-cold water. It is still very, very foggy and chilly. So, here I help him out of the wasteling. And as soon as he notices that he can escape, zoop, he's gone. After that catch, the fish would not <coughs> cooperate for two days. Uh, and we had very bad weather and spent most of the time in our bivvies. But fortunately, the sunshine came back on the third day. Good morning, dear friends. This is the morning atmosphere at Michelle's Lake. After a freaking cold night, that was temperatures, yeah, not below, but about freezing. However, I was snug and warm in my sleeping bag and uh, we are well equipped and uh, the sun is shining now and it's quite a blessed place here in my 
in my carp chair. So uh, I'm enjoying it. There's fog over the lake. Uh, Eric, uh, I'm not I'll show you later. There's too much sunshine now. Uh, right, just opposite of the camera. Uh, the fog is gradually disappearing. Well, I'm enjoying this moment. I've just watched a wren hopping around, flying around. Over there, there is a grey herring heron hunting fish so there is a lot to see and hopefully to film if they come a little bit closer well <coughs> I'm going to make myself a nice cup of coffee now and drink a hot coffee here in the sunshine so what else do you want at the beginning of a new day yeah we have caught specimen fish but to express it diplomatically there have been better gold in October uh, I hope that the water warms up a little bit close to the bank now when the sun shines on it so that maybe one or the other carp is tempted to take my bait that it stimulates its appetite and who knows maybe we get another one and uh, make a half half a dozen full there's a predator bird flying over there but I don't see what sort it is so I'll keep you informed and uh, see you later The carp began to strike again and we managed to catch a lovely 34 pounder the following night. We did however not only catch carp but also roaches. I had brought a light uh, match rod and during the day when the big fish uh, were asleep uh, we would play a little bit and catch roaches which is fun in the sunshine, I do recommend it. Well, at night the fish, the big fish came back and in the last two nights we uh, caught two uh, carps in the 30s, I think 35 and 36 pounds.